So what I want to know is if this scene looks familiar to anybody. Mom, I'm home. Has that ever happened to you in your home? Yes. <laughs> something like that? So what do you say if one of your children comes home and does something like this? What are you doing? What are you doing? And what does your child say? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> and so what do you say? Pick that stuff up. Pick that stuff up. And what do they say? No. 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 <laughs> and what do you say? Yes. Pick it up now. And this is a power struggle. It happens every day in every home in our country. It happens between parents and children, between siblings, between coworkers, between employers and employees. It happens even between two people driving down the freeway in different cars. It's the most common form of misbehavior that occurs in childhood and one that we never seem to outgrow when we become adults. So tonight we're gonna to talk about why we all, and especially our children, love to power struggle how to get out of a power struggle when we get in one, and how to prevent them from happening in the first place. And everything I talk about here tonight will work on children of all ages, even those in adult bodies. <laughs> so what we're gonna do tonight is talk about power struggles. And I'm gonna give you some background. I have a, a chart over here that I wanna just cover a little bit of background information first about why kids misbehave. <clears throat> they misbehave because they're trying to get certain needs met. And these are on your handouts also. They're trying to get their needs to, to belong, to feel loved, to feel powerful, to feel valuable, to feel like they have a place, and to experiment and explore. So all of us, all of us are born with needing to, having to get certain needs met. Okay? And these are the needs. And we're going to use our behavior to get these needs met from the time we're born. And we're gonna either do what our parents would call appropriate behavior or inappropriate behavior. But we're gonna do whatever works to get those needs met, okay? Further, if we're misbehaving, or let's, let's look at it this way, if your child is misbehaving, you can figure out why they're misbehaving and then apply appropriate corrective measures. So it's a systematic approach to discipline and behavior in children. So what I'm going to have you do, I'll just pick one of you at a time. I'm going to have you tell me to pick up this toy. And the rest of you, I want you to take a deep breath. I'm going to start misbehaving. I'm going to be a kid here, and I'm going to start misbehaving. So I want you to take a deep breath and ask yourself, how would you be feeling if you were the parent in this situation? And then after you do that, I want you to look at your chart and you'll see there's four different what we call mistaken goals. The mistaken goals are attention, power, revenge, and avoidance. Okay? You're going to diagnose which of these four goals your child is in by how you feel, how you feel as a result of their misbehavior. This is really good news. You know why? Because most of the time, we try to figure out why our kids are misbehaving, right? What's wrong with you? Why are you doing that? What do they say? Do they sit there and tell you ex exactly why they're misbehaving? <laughs> no. They're like, I don't know. They shrug their shoulders. I don't know. They don't know why they're misbehaving. So when we try to psychoanalyze our children, it doesn't work. Because not only do we not know why they're doing it, they usually don't know why they're doing it. And we're not therapists. So we can't figure it out. So it's a very ineffective way to parent when you're always trying to figure out why. This, on the other hand, you will be able to correct your child's misbehavior. And all the corrective measures we talk about will build closeness in your relationship. It'll build their self-esteem. It'll create more closeness and connection. So often, you will find out the whys. Because the corrective measures are not some of the old ways. We, we teach alternatives to spanking. We teach alternatives to yelling. We don't ground kids. So there's a lot of the 
more punitive types of discipline that tend to distance the relationship so you don't always get the communication that you would like, these don't do that. So these will actually bring you closer so you end up finding out the whys. But it's not your primary objective and you don't need to know it to correct their misbehavior, get them to behave how they're supposed to be behaving, and teach them to be more responsible, respectful kids. So here we go. Tell me to pick up the toy. And I just want you to keep repeating, Debbie, pick up the toy. Debbie, pick up the toy. And the rest of you, remember, take a deep breath, ask yourself how you're feeling, and then try to guess which of the mistaken goals that I'm using. OK, so go ahead and say, Debbie, pick up the toy. Debbie, pick up the toy. <sighs> Debbie, pick up the toy. <laughs> I'm so tired. Debbie, pick up the toy. I can't. I'm tired. Debbie, pick up the toy. Stop. <laughs> how are you feeling? If you were a parent dealing with a child like this, how would you be feeling? Um, <laughs> I don't know, irritated? Irritated, good. Yeah. What else? What else would the rest of you feeling? I just want to smack you at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good, I'll talk about that in a second. I feel pity. I'm like, okay, oh, they had a really hard day. You always feel pity. That's you okay. do it for them. <laughs> So you feel sorry for me. So which goal do you think it is? Because I'm getting and some mixed up results. Them. Which, which goal do you think it was? Avoidance. Good. So when you feel sorry for them, when you feel helpless, hopeless, like what can I do? Then you know that this child's goal is avoidance. Oh. And, what, and what my behavior is saying is, I feel helpless. I feel like I can't do it. But I know if you sit here and try to get me to do it and coax me and sometimes you'll do it for me, I feel loved or I feel valuable or I feel like I have a place. So I've mistakenly come to believe that this is how I get my needs met, by acting like this. Okay? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have one that does this? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. But we're not talking about this tonight. So let me do another one. So, oh wait, I don't want to put you on the spot all of a sudden. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. <laughs> okay, so tell me to pick up the toy. And just keep repeating over Debbie, and over. please pick up the toy. Oh, I'll get it, Dad. I'll get it. Debbie, please pick up the yeah. toy now. Oh, that's a cool shirt, Dad. I like that. Debbie. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it later, toy. I promise. I'll do it, I'll do it. Debbie. Okay, stop. How's that feel? Not good. <laughs> but I see it all the time. So. Okay, so what's the feeling? Okay, what else? I get frustrated. Frustrated? Which goal do you think that was? Power. Power. Mm. Attention? Yeah, it was the goal of attention. Were any of you annoyed? Frustrated? I was annoyed. I still want to smack <coughs> that kid. Okay. Well, you're going to want to smack the kid in all of them. And we remember, we teach not smack, smacking. <laughs> but but all, whenever, whenever your child is misbehaving, you're going to feel annoyed or you're going to feel angry, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever your child's misbehaving, you're going to have a blanket feeling that comes up. For you, it's that, whatever that feeling is of wanting to smack him. So it's not a blanket. It is what it is. I shoot from the hip. I still okay. want to smack that kid. Okay. So, so that's what you feel when they're misbehaving. So it's really important to say, I want to, I feel angry or I feel frustrated like what? And get some discernment going with this chart because you want to be able to identify which reason that they're misbehaving so that you can correct it. Because each of these goals has its own corrective measure. So it has a set of what to do when your child's misbehaving this way to fix it and to, to manage the misbehavior, to teach them responsibility, to build their self-esteem and to create closeness in your relationship, okay? So you want to go underneath kind of that knee-jerk response that happens when they're not listening or they're misbehaving in a certain way. You want to get some real finesse going here and that's what we're working at. So when you feel annoyed and frustrated, then you know your child's goal is undue attention. And what my behavior is saying is, I feel loved and I feel special if I can keep you engaged with me. If I keep you busy with me talking to me, I know I'm loved. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's a mis we call it a mistaken goal because I've mistakenly come to connect misbehaving like this with getting love or feeling special. Do another one. So tell me to pick up my toy. 
Don't make me. <laughs> Just keep telling me to pick up my toy. Oh, okay. Pick up the toy, Debbie. <sighs> yeah, okay. And I walk away. No, just keep telling me to pick it up because we're playing a game here. Pick up the toy, Debbie. You're so mean to me. Yeah, I am. Pick up the toy. Dad never makes me do stuff like that. That's not here. Pick up the toy. I hate you. I hate Stop. you. Stop. Pick up the Stop. toy. How's that feel? I think I wouldn't talk to a child that late. I know, isn't it terrible? <laughs> How does that feel when a child's saying and behaving like that, acting Awful. like that? Alpha like what? Makes me sick to my stomach. Hurts, right? Ow! What's the goal here? What goal am I doing? Avoidance. <clears throat> hurt. And did you oh, notice she wanted to revenge. hurt me back, right? right, right. Oh, yeah. yes. that's, a, that's, that's another sign of this one. Revenge. revenge. So when you feel hurt, like you want to hurt them back, then you know that this child's goal is the goal of revenge. And what my behavior is saying is, I feel hurt, so something's hurt me. Mm. I feel hurt inside, and I'm going to make you feel hurt the way I feel oh, hurt. Yeah, I'm going to take you down with child. me. Yeah, I experienced that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So that's the mistaken belief of the child in the goal of revenge. Okay? No. Pick up the toy, please. No. Pick up the toy, please. No, I won't. You can't make me. <laughs> Stop. You're taking that awfully well. <laughs> I'm so used to it. I'm very good at this now. So how are you feeling? Um, when she does that, I get that I, I can make you do it. Okay, good. What else? How do you feel when your child is, no, I'm not going to do it? I feel myself sort of digging my heels in. Good. What's the feeling? Tense. Okay, tense. How about provoked? Challenged. Yeah. Challenged. Yeah. So what is this goal? Power. Power. So when you feel provoked, challenged, like you're going to make them do it, mm -hmm. then you know that this child's goal is power. And what my behavior is saying is, inside, I feel powerless. You have to understand that. When you see that kid that you want to just say, you know, not, you know, right now you listen to me or whatever, inside, they feel powerless. But they've learned, if, if I defy you, if I don't do what you say and you get all crazy, I feel powerful <laughs> or I feel valuable. So I've mistakenly come to believe that this is how I get my need met to feel powerful, by defying you, by not listening to you. And this is the goal that we're going to focus on tonight. So when you're home and you're noticing your children misbehaving, if they're in any of the other three goals, the goal of avoidance, the goal of revenge or the goal of attention, the tools we talk about tonight won't work. Okay, because each goal has a set of tools that work for that goal. So when you go home, you want to make sure you're in fact dealing with a power struggle. So you need to go through this process of identifying or diagnosing the goal. How do I feel as a result of that misbehavior? And here's the interesting thing. You can't, you can't identify it by their, what they're doing, their misbehavior. Let's say you ask them to clean up their room, and you think, okay, they're not cleaning up their room. That must be a power struggle, right? But it's not necessarily a power struggle. One day, you could ask them to clean up their room. You could say, go clean up your room. They go, yeah, 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 I'll get it in a minute. Attention. Half an hour later, you say, go clean up your room, and they go, no. Power. Later, you ask them, go clean up your room. I hate you. You're mean to me. Revenge. Later on, you ask them to do it, clean up your room. I can't. I'm too tired. Avoidance. So see, it's not that they're not cleaning up the room that makes it a power struggle. It's their intention and their attitude about it. It's, and it's the way you know is by how you feel in the moment. So every moment that they misbehave, you need to do this recheck. Take a deep breath. My child is misbehaving. How do I feel right now? <laughs> and then look at the chart and figure out which goal it is. Okay, so can you see his 